Hi YouTube, today we're playing The Freshman, Book 1, Chapter 9, called Sorority Ball, Part 1. The morning after your sorority sleepover, you head to Professor Vasquez's office to update him on your progress. Good morning, Professor Vasquez. Hmm. Oh yes, good morning. He noticed the empty waste paper basket in the corner of the room and wonder what is a professional and wonder what is a professor's letter to his daughter went out with the trash. Everything okay? You're looking a little down. What? This is how I always look. Guess I can't argue with that. Now do you have an update on the task I set you or did you just come here to irritate me? Well, I'm on the final challenge. I just have to find an upperclassman to take me to the sorority ball this evening. And what do you want from me? Boy advice? No, I, well, it's a bit awkward. Becca and Madison said that I have to bring James. They were very adamant about it. Really? I have to say I didn't see this twist coming. Maybe I should hire Becca and Madison as story consultants for my novel. Professor? Sorry, sorry. Regarding James, well, how do you feel about him? Is there something there? I'd say there's definitely something between us. Interesting. Just then the door opens and James walks in. He stops short when he sees you and Vasquez staring at him. Uh, everything okay in here? Good morning, James. Do you have a nice suit in your closet? Yes? Good, you're taking Cinnamon to the sorority ball at Kappa Phi Sigma house tonight. What? That's your reaction? Sorry, I didn't mean it. I was just caught off guard, that's all. I'd be happy to accompany you to this sorority ball. You would? Uh, I mean, thank you. I look forward to it. You can pick me up from my dorm at six. Great, I will see you then. Back at the suite, you find Zach and Tyler in their usual spot in front of the TV, gaming controllers clutched in their hands. Careful, Cinnamon, Caitlin's in full-on prep mode. Uh-oh, is it bad? She's asked her opinion on like 30 different dresses. And yes, they were all totally and yes, they were all totally gorgeous, but I'm trying to focus on kicking Tyler's butt. Oh, you're kicking my butt? The score suggests otherwise, my friend. Suddenly, Caitlin tries out of her room and snaps her fingers at Tyler and Zach, glaring. What? What did we do wrong? Could you use your words, please? Up. Caitlin hauls Zach and Tyler off the couch and starts flipping over cushions. Looking for something? I lost my sparkly eyeshadow palette. Bad enough that I can't seem to find the right dress. Now my face is a total disaster, too. Let me see. You look gorgeous. I'm kind of starting to kind of wish you were my date. You, you are? Maybe a little. You're just saying that to make me feel better. But thank you. Why would your makeup be in the couch? Abby walks into the living room looking stunning in a flattering dress. You all stare at her. Oh, Caitlin, were you looking for your eyeshadow? Dang, Abby. What? Why are you all looking at me like that? Because you look hot, girl. Duh. Ah, Doesn't she look great, Tyler? Cinnamon. You, you really do look amazing, Abby. Really? Really. Oh well, thanks Tyler. Anyway, here's your eyeshadow palette, Caitlin. It dropped into the cabinet in the bathroom. Sorry, I should have mentioned it before. No worries, I'm just glad to have it back. Now if only I could find the right dress. But let's focus on cinnamon. What are you wearing to the dance? Hmm, I haven't really thought about it. Are you kidding me? Picking the right dress is everything. With the right dress, your crushes will drool over you and your enemies will be insanely jealous. I guess I'd better choose wisely. We're gonna go with this one. The free one. You walk back out of the room wearing a little black dress and heels. What do you think? Adorable. Did you decide what you're going to wear yet, Caitlin? Hmm, let me think. Oh, I've got it. Caitlin rushes into her room and comes back a few minutes later wearing a beautiful red dress with a gold necklace. She spins for you and your friends grinning. Well, what do you think? It's perfect, right? Right? Yes, yes, it's perfect. The best one yet. Better late than never. Do you like this one, Cinnamon? Let me see. You look amazing. Kellen smiles even wider and pulls you into a tight hug. You're amazing. I know. Just then the doorbell rings and the door to your suite swings open. Did someone order tea handsome? Oh. Are we interrupting? Kellen pulls away from you as Darren limps into the room, James right behind him. Nope, not interrupting anything. How are you? Can't complain, especially when my date looks as good as you do. Looks like this guy's got moves on and off the field. Oh my god, Zach. Sorry you barked in here like this. James told me to wait, didn't you, buddy? Yeah, I did tell you that, buddy. 
James walks over to you, his hands in his pocket. You catch him glancing at your dress. Hey, Cinnamon, you look nice. That's it? Really charming, James. We're both doing this for Vasquez, remember? I didn't remember that, actually, but I appreciate the reminder. I mean it. So it's going to be like that, huh? I can tell this is going to be a long night. Only if you play your cards right, buddy. Is that cool it was to color commentary? Where's your date, Abby? Darren, I thought Logan was going to come. Yeah, about that. He ate like 70 eggs yesterday and he's still sick. Uh, why did he eat 70 eggs exactly? Beans, that's all he said. Maybe I could be your date. I mean, I'm not really doing anything. Except hanging out with your best bud, Zach. Just kidding, you two should totally go together. They can't. She needs to bring an upperclassman. Ugh, this is so annoying. Well, don't worry about it, Abby. Just stick with us. Well, I don't want to be a third wheel or anything. You won't be. Yeah, no worries. If anyone asks, we'll say your date just went to get drinks or something. Really? Yeah, why not? I like this guy, Cinnamon. Nice catch. Yeah, I think I'm starting to like him, too. I can't say I expected that. Hey, I didn't, cheat. I didn't get all dressed up just to watch you two flirt. Let's go. After a short walk through campus, the five of you stand outside the Kappa Phi Sigma house in the soft light of dusk. Darren offers Caitlin his arm. Oh, thank you. Let's see if anyone's home. Darren walks up to the front door and raps sharply, his other arm firmly linked with Caitlin's. Darren's so glad you could make it to our little survey, and you brought Caitlin. I have to say, I wouldn't have guessed that you were her type. What is that supposed to mean? Nothing, of course. Come on, the dancing's just about to get started. You all file in after Darren and Caitlin, Becca leaving a winding path through the throng of guests. So far, so good, Abby. Just keep a low profile and you'll be golden. I hope you're right. Becca taps the fork to her glass to get everyone's attention as Madison plays up a romantic R&B playlist. Welcome to Kappa Phi Sigma's first official ball of the quarter. Darren, Caitlin, would you like to open the dance floor? Uh, we'd be happy to. Here, take my hand, Caitlin. Okay. Abby leans in close to you and James while Darren leaves Caitlin haltingly across the dance floor. Is it just me or does Caitlin seem actively disinterested in Darren? Maybe we should get out there, alleviate the awkwardness of it. Are you asking me to dance? I might be. Professor's orders, you know? Right. You step out to the dance floor and James puts his hand on your waist. You clap your hands behind his neck and smile up at him. Hey James, you can stand closer if you want. Sure, why not? While well, I feel a little enthusiasm, I could still change my mind. James pulls you closer, a wry smile tugging at the corner of his mouth. I kind of don't think you will. James gracefully leads you across the dance floor. You know, you're kind of good at this. Thanks, I have some experience. My parents used to drag me to charity balls and formal events all the time, and dancing was always required. Wow, sounds fancy. More like incredibly dull, but at least I picked up a trick or two. He lifts your hand, leading you into an artful turn. Very nice. Wait right here, I'm going to go get us some drinks. What a gentleman. As James walks off toward the beverage table, you spot a familiar face for the crowd. Abby leans over and whispers to you. Wow, Chris isn't exactly my type, but he definitely knows how to wear a suit. Yeah, he's looking good. I wish he didn't look so good. Seriously. Just then James returns with your drinks, and you stand on the edge of the dance floor, trying not to look at Chris too much. Becca pushes through the crowd and wraps an arm around Chris. Come on, Chris. I want to dance. Uh, sure. Becca drapes her arms around Chris's neck, shooting a sly look at you out of the corner of her eye. You okay, Cinnamon? You kind of went away for a sec. Sorry, I just... Let's dance some more. Sure, whatever you want. You and James step back onto the dance floor while Becca leans her head on Chris's chest. What should I do? Focus on being with James. Hmm, oh no, I have to pick between them two. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a tiger paw, so if it always let it go, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Rub it in Chris's face. You catch Chris's eye over Becca's shoulder and pull James closer. Are you sure you're okay? You seem a bit distracted. I'm totally focused, I promise. Kiss me. What? Kiss me. James obliges, leaning down to brush his lips against yours. Oh no, why would I do that? James pulls away a bit and stares at you, suspicious. Too late, you look away from Chris, and James turns to see where you were looking. I don't know what's going on here, but I know I don't want to be involved. I'm not in the habit of letting people use me, Cinnamon. Oh no, why did I pick that? I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. I just, well, it's complicated. Justin crept steps through the crowd, his expression unreadable, and touches your elbow gently. 
James, can I borrow Cinnamon for a second? Why are you asking me? She's an adult. She can make her own decisions. Thanks, James. Um, I'll make this fast. I'll go check in Abby. If you need anything, just let me know, okay? Okay. You turn to Chris as James sets you across the dance floor. So what did you want to talk to me about? There are just some things I want to explain, but not here. Well, there's nothing to talk about, Chris. Chris looks you in the back, then regains his composure. Uh, are you sure? Yes, Chris, I'm sure. Fine, that's fair. I just, I wish things could have been different, that's all. See you around, Cinnamon. Yeah, see you. You watch Chris walk away from you and return to Becca's side, and a heavy weight settles over your heart. When did things get so complicated? You lean against the wall and take a deep breath, then pull out your phone to dial Zach. Hey, Cinnamon, what's up? How's your fancy ball going? Not so great, Zach. Not so great. What's wrong? Oh, just stuff with Chris, I guess. Well, you know I'm happy to talk boy drama with you, but isn't Caitlin there? I'm sure she'd know just what to say to cheer you up. You know what? I think you're right about that. I'll see if I can find out where she disappeared to. Go for it. Just make sure to fill me in when you get back. Will do. You head back inside and search to cap a ball for Caitlin, finally spotting her leaning against the banister. A wave of relief washes over you as you speed walk over to her. Huh? Why does she look so sad? Okay, chapter 9 complete. I'm really sad that I made that choice. I don't know, I literally eeny meeny mighty, mighty mowed it because I thought that it was either going to pick between Chris and James. I don't think I read that properly. But yeah, make sure you like and subscribe to see chapter 10 and bye guys. Okay, today I'm playing the freshman book one as chapter 10, Sorority Ball Part 2. As the Kappa Phi Sigma Sorority Ball, you walk over to Caitlin and lean against the banister next to her. Hey Caitlin, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Weird night, huh? You would not believe the drama I'm doing with right now. James and I kind of had a moment out there, and Chris saw it and wanted to talk to me alone, and now... You notice Caitlin studiously not making eye contact with you, her gaze drifting across the throng of party goers. Are you sure you're okay? Caitlin tries to look at you, a tiny crease between her eyebrows. Sorry, Cinnamon, I just, I don't know if I can hear about this right now. What? What do you mean? I, never mind, it's too hard to explain. So, what happened with Chris? What should I do? Um, press Caitlin. Oh no, these are so hard. Chris Caitlin about how she's acting. Forget about Chris. What's going on with you? You seem upset. I don't worry about it. I just feel like uh, this is way hard to explain. Can we just drop it for now? Okay, you know, you can tell me anything, right? Yeah, sure, anything. Justin, Darren returns from the kitchen with an old fashioned in one hand and a lemon drop in the other. He hands Caitlin the lemon drop and she takes a grateful sip. Hey, Cinnamon, sorry I would have gotten you something if I knew you were hanging out with us. And if I had a third hand. Oh, don't worry about. Caitlin suddenly grabs Darren's sleeve with her free hand, cutting you off before you can finish speaking. Darren, do you want to go for a walk? I bet the stars look great tonight. Sure, let's do it. See you around, Cinnamon. Right. See you around. More confused than ever, you wander across the dance floor to where James waits talking to Abby. Hey, Cinnamon, you okay? You look a little... Befuddled, bothered, bewildered. Yeah, something like that. Maybe a dance will cheer you up? It's certainly worth a shot. One sec, James. I want to talk to Cinnamon alone real quick. That okay? Sure, she's all yours. Abby pulls you aside, smiling brightly. What do you want to talk about? I just want to say James is awesome. He's been really sweet. He's been really sweet to me all evening, and he obviously likes you. Plus, he's super hot, but I'm sure you've noticed that. Yeah, he's definitely boyfriend material. Cool, glad you agree. Just wanted to give you my blessing. Thanks, Abby. Much appreciated. I just wish I knew what was going on with Caitlin. Have you noticed she's been acting kind of distant? Yeah, I feel like something is going on with her. Where'd she disappear to anyway? She went for a walk with Darren. Maybe we should try to go listen in on what they're talking about. If we don't go now, we might never figure out what secret Caitlin is keeping. I'm pretty worried about her, but let's just stay inside. I'd rather Caitlin tell me what's bothering her herself. Sometimes it's not that easy, Cinnamon. Yeah, I guess so. As the clock strikes midnight, Becca clinks the fork against her champagne glass to gather everyone's attention. Ooh, they're about to announce who got in. Hey, Caitlin, back from your walk? Yeah, sorry about earlier. Turns out I just needed someone to talk to. 
Happy to be of service. Oh, great. Everything okay? I'm not sure, actually. <laughs> Nervous about getting in? Are you doing this just for Vasquez, or do you really want to be part of Kappa Phi Sigma? To be honest, I'm starting to see the appeal. They definitely know how to throw a party. Ahem, quiet down, everyone. The moment you've all been waiting for has finally arrived. That good mass and retreat into a back room, and return holding tall, thin candles topped with flickering flames. The time has come to announce which of our remaining pledges will become full Kappa Phi Sigma sisters. Ooh, I can't wait to find out. Don't you already know? Well, yeah, but I forgot. Oh my god, Madison. Anyway, the pledges that we decide to accept are... Caitlin. E, I knew it. Yes. Congratulations. Anyone else, Becca? Hmm, let me see. Nope, that's everyone. What about Cinnamon and Abby? What about them? <laughs> Caitlin, it's okay. Actually, it's not. I'd like to hear which of your insane standards I didn't live up to, Becca. Oh, Cinnamon, don't make me humiliate you in front of all of our nice guests. Please, go right ahead. Frankly, after watching you two over the past few days, you and Abby simply aren't Kappa Phi Sigma material. And this little performance you're giving is certainly proof of that. We glare at Becca as she continues listing you, your and Abby's shortcomings until Caitlin clears her throat. Uh, Becca, could you maybe shut up? Excuse me, what did you just say, Pledge? I said shut up, and I'm not a Pledge anymore. Yeah, she's a sister now. That's not what I meant. I quit. What? I quit. I don't want to be part of this anymore, especially if it means being around you. Caitlin, you don't have to quit for us. I know I don't have to, but if the alternative is putting up with this brat all the time, it's an easy choice. Ah, boo, you're not really leaving, are you? Good riddance. See you never, losers. Right back at you. <laughs> you, Abby, and Caitlin tried out of the sorority house and out of Cap of the Sigma forever. Caitlin throwing one last look over his shoulder. Regretting anything? Sigh, maybe a little. I was really looking forward to all those parties. We'll make sure your birthday party this weekend is extra special, okay? It'll be way more awesome than any party Kappa Phi can throw. Deal. Up ahead, James and Naren walk side by side, an affable silence between them. You catch Caitlin's eye. So are you going to tell us about your walk with Darren? Oh, that. I had a feeling you would ask. Darren is so hot. Maybe, but I have my eye on someone else. Caitlin flashes a mischievous smile and quickens her pace, falling in step with Darren. He puts a friendly arm around her. Hey, Caitlin, feeling better? Big time. Thanks again. I know you probably didn't expect to spend all night talking, but... Hey, I get it. Sometimes that's what you need. This night only gets more confusing. Abby rolls her eyes and suppresses a snort. Oh, Cinnamon. Poor sweet Cinnamon. What is that supposed to mean? Oh, nothing. James hangs back to talk to you, and Abby speeds up, leaving the two of you alone. That was pretty rough back there, Cinnamon. How are you holding up? Take a wild guess. Yeah, I know that can't have felt good. Unfortunately, getting rejected is the least of your worries. Vasquez is going to be mad. But I didn't even want to join Kappa Phi Sigma. Vasquez just made me rush because he wants drama for his stupid story. You know, I'm starting to feel like this might not be worth it. Between you and me, I do think he asked a little too much of you this time. I'm glad I'm not the only one. I just hope he's happy with my essay. You sigh heavily and look out over the moonlit campus, your brow creased with worry. Otherwise, I might not be attending Hartfeld much longer. Okay, chapter 10 is complete. I hope that you guys enjoyed that and make sure you subscribe and turn the notification bells on for chapter 11. Bye guys.